In this problem, we're going to find the volume of a solid of rotation. This comes from the disc section, not the shell section, also known as washers, discs or washers. Let's go ahead and graph this region first. X equals zero, Y equals one. Those are easy to graph. So x equals zero is the y-axis, and y equals one. We'll say that's one right there. Y equals one's horizontal line. There's another x equals y to the thirteenth. Now we usually have y as a function of x. If I solve for y, it's x to the one thirteenth power, or the thirteenth root of x. The square root of x is graphed like that. The 13th root of x has a sharper turn. So the 13th root of x is going to, it's also going to have the point 0, 0, and 1, 1. Just going to go through those two points, and it's going to curve more sharply than the square root function. So something like that. We're rotating about the line y equals 1. So we're rotating about there. We have the y-axis as another boundary. So it's this wedge right here. I'm drawing one cross-section. We're in the uh, disk section 2.2. So my cross-sections need to be perpendicular to my rotation axis, like that. And it's going to revolve into a disk uh, or, or a circle. and Let's go ahead and write down the integral formula, volume equals, so this is pi integral a to b, r, big R squared minus little r squared. We are going to have a dx because we got to change our x coordinate to cover our entire region. All right, our region here is solid. There is no hole in the center. Uh, so little r is going to be 0, or you could just ignore it. Uh, what about big R? So big R is this distance here. It's a function of x. All right, so it's top minus bottom, or big minus small. So the top is the y equals 1, so the top is 1. Now what's the bottom? The bottom is that curve. It needs to be a function of x, so we need to write it as y equals uh, x to the 1 13th power, and that's going to be the bottom. All right, that's big R of x, and now we're ready to put it into the volume formula. Let's get uh, a and b. x is going to be between a and b. For us, that happens to be Zero, the x values go between 0 and 1. So our volume is pi integral 0 to 1. Big R squared, which is on the left, we just wrote down. 1 minus x to the 1 13th power squared. You could write minus 0 squared dx, because little r is 0. All right, next up, we got to boil this out. So we're foiling this, so 1 times 1 is 1, minus x to the 1 13th minus x to the 1 13th, which is minus 2 x to the 1 13th. Now, negative x to the 1 13th squared, the two negatives cancel, so it's plus x. So 1 13th squared, the way we deal with powers of powers is we're going to multiply those powers, so it's going to be the 2 13th power haven't done any calculus yet. And now we're just going to do the anti-power rule. Antiderivative of 1 is x. All right, 1 13th. <coughs> so it's x, you add 13 13 so that's 14 13 And it'll be times the reciprocal 13 14 
So this is x to the 2 thirteenths. You add 1 to that, 2 thirteenths. So you have 13 thirteenths to 2 thirteenths, and you get 15 thirteenths times the reciprocal 13 fifteenths going 0 to 1. So these are really nice endpoints. I can plug them in very quickly. So plug in, when you plug in 0 here, you're going to get 0, which is nice. But we plug in 1, we have 1 minus 2 to the 13, or 2 times 13 fourteenths. Now 1 to any power is 1, and 1 to any power is 1. So those x's just disappear. Let's write times 1, 13 fifteenths times 1. And this number here, uh, if you get a decimal, we'll see that up top in a second, right here. So that should be our volume.